Love it. All right. Let's wait. Let's wait another like 30 seconds and then we'll get into the meat. All right, cool. And the steak and eggs. Are you, you're a, are you vegetarian, right? I'm not vegetarian, no. Oh, you're not? A lot of people think I'm like a vegetarian or vegan, but I'm not. I Dude, just, okay. I, I swear <laughs> I thought you were like vegan. No, I just like to eat fruits and vegetables. That's it. Like, <laughs> I, I cook steak all the time, chicken. <laughs> <laughs> like, ah, oh, jeez. I'm like, oh, see, I think we we just we because we never see you like you must eat steak, steak <laughs> alpha. We just see you with like I'm eating fruit today, and everyone's like, we vegan. We, only vegans eat fruit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's All funny. Right. I actually get that a, a more than you would think. I have a lot of people think that I'm either a vegan or a vegetarian because I, I talk a lot about like the herbs and, you know, I post about like the fruits and the vegetables, but shit, I eat meat all the time. <laughs> okay, all right. Nice, man, nice. All right, so let's just, let's, let's dive into this. So this is Art House, uh, I think it's number six. And today we're here with Shamin and the topic today is how to grow and build and create and make amazing your very own supplement brand. And we have an expert in that right here. Shamin, welcome to the podcast, talk show, whatever you want to call this. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate it, man. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's, it's a pleasure. Now, to start off, like, how did you get started with doing supplement sales and ashwagandha and all that stuff? How, how did that all come to be? Well, I've actually been into supplements probably since I was around... 14 or 15 years old on some level, because that was when I first started experimenting with different like workout supplements, like creatine and stuff like that, because I've been into fitness and uh, weightlifting for a long time. So that was kind of like my introduction to it was just through working out. And then, um, you know, over the years, I, I kept learning more and more about different supplements. And there's so many different kinds of supplements, like there's so much stuff beyond just the workout stuff. Oh yeah. That's I, I kind of, I started with creatine and then, you know, you start looking into vitamins, micronutrients, herbs, plant medicine, all this stuff. And you're like, Whoa. Exactly. Like as I started getting into like the holistic health type stuff, uh, I started learning more about like natural herbs and like um, things that you can use for uh, like mental boosts mm -hmm. um you know even even when i was younger i i used to research things like nootropics which you might be familiar with them but yeah, 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 yeah. Like the brain drugs like you know the, what the movie limitless was kind of based on which they exaggerated it but that concept is where it comes from yeah like gorilla mind rush and similar stuff where exactly exactly i actually use gorilla mind rush i need to order some more i'm out <laughs> um, Mike, up the production, man. We got a we got a happy customer. Um, so, so why ashwagandha specifically? Why ashwagandha? Yeah, uh, pretty much. I went with ashwagandha because I had already been using it for over a year, and I remember when I had first heard about it. I don't remember where exactly I heard about it, but I think that was around 2017 or early 2018 when I first heard about it. Mm -hmm. a little research about it and i was like it, it had all these different benefits and i was just like there's no way this one little supplement does all these different things because yeah i kept reading about it online listed so many different benefits like mental benefits physical benefits mm -hmm. you know, it helps with like anxiety depression muscle growth testosterone it's a mild nootropic uh helps with sleep quality helps your, uh, your immune system. So I had all these different benefits and I was skeptical at first because like I'm the kind that number one, uh, I feel like so many different like supplements and products don't really work. There's very few of them that like they solidified work. And then, um, you know, number two, I'm just kind of like a natural skeptic. Like I'm not gonna believe it unless I really investigate it. So, well, and that's the thing too. Like a lot of the supplements, like the the dose on the back, 
of where it's like take 200 milligrams a day like that's not enough compared to like what you actually need yeah yeah um if you look at that that's true and i even have articles on my website about dosages for different uses of the herb because li literally if you wanted different results you might have to take much higher range of dosage versus taking the minimum range of dosage for other results kind of depends on what reason you're taking it for right right um, now when when it comes to like the the whole process of sourcing the ashwagandha making sure it's good putting it in the capsule selling it like how how, how does that break down in the long in the long run like what does that look like uh there's a couple different ways it can look like but um for me i do pretty much um you know private labeling some mm -hmm. people might call it white labeling but uh, basically, any type of supplement that you want mass produced, you can usually talk to like these labs or factories that exist in different places around the world. And you can get them to either, either make you like a custom type formula or like a generic type formula of what they already have on hand for all kinds of different supplements and um, herbs or, you know, over the counter things. <laughs> Excuse me. Corona be able to get <laughs> right <laughs> um hopefully the ashwagandha will keep me safe and boost my immune system <laughs> but uh yeah basically there's all kinds of different um supplements and things that you can get manufactured um all around the world so all you really have to do is find one of these places and um you know you can talk to them and have them negotiate a deal there's different levels to it yeah um but I, you know, for me, I decided I wanted to have my own brand, like my own ownership. So, you know, I called around to these different places that helped to, uh, you know, create it for you. And then I made sure I had my own like company in place. So I got like my LLC in order, right. I, like my logo and my brand name. I had all like my, you know, employee identification number, EIN, all my stuff for my taxes and my credit and all that overall how much how much did all the back end stuff cost before you before you sold a single bottle of your ashwagandha how much was like the whole process roughly um i spent at least three thousand dollars before i sold a single bottle of ashwagandha okay just really getting all the bottles made getting like my logos and stuff made get, getting everything printed and sent to me and packaged and all that you know quality control making sure everything works exactly you know setting up my website and having all my you know kind of legal stuff in order because that's kind of one thing about the health and supplement industry maybe selling other items you might be able to get away with uh not forming like your kind of legal documents and your you know your official like organization whether it's going to be you know an llc or some sort of company or S Corp or whatever it is, but getting your kind of your your legal organization in order before you sell it is a little bit more important when you're selling supplements and like health related things than mm -hmm. it is if I was selling like candles or soap or something like that, or you know, like uh, electronics or trinkets, you know, because it has like real like health ramifications and then you have things like you know, regulations, you have the FDA and things like that. Yeah, it's a lot more, you're dealing, like these these things potentially could severely hurt someone on like a, you know, a sock or a t-shirt or something like that. So there's definitely more regulation. Exactly, exactly. So I was just a little bit more cautious about having all that in order before I started. But, uh, you know, you're gonna, if you're gonna be doing any type of supplement business, even the pure inventory alone and like, getting your bottles or your samples or kind of like your first shipment is going to cost probably thousands of dollars in minimum. Okay. So this is yes. not something you want to go in with 500 bucks and some hopes. No, you can't do this with 500 bucks because you wouldn't even be able to get inventory for, from a lot of places or like your samples are going to be so expensive if you're only getting like a small number of bottles, like mm -hmm. probably for the most part for a lot of different, organizations that you talk to that can help you to manufacture a supplement um that are legit 
it's probably going to cost like a hundred dollars to a thousand dollars for their minimum order size. Right. Right. A lot of things that people, people don't really think about is all this back end stuff that can really add up really, really quickly. <laughs> it can definitely add up quickly. Like there's definitely a lot of things that I learned along the way that I didn't expect or didn't really take as much into consideration when I first started. Now, when it comes to, when it comes to like the overall supplement mark, the overall supplement business, what are some like pros and cons you have from your, from your time experiencing like this, this niche of the industry? So the pros about the supplement market is um, number one, there's definitely like some hardcore people that are into supplements. Like there's a lot of people out there that research supplements and live by taking different supplements, um, especially people who are into like health and fitness and alternative medicine and stuff like that. Like yeah. there's people who like are constantly buying different products. Well, there's like a whole, uh, there's like a whole subclass of people that do not trust the medical establishment now and will do anything it takes to, to, to heal themselves before they have to go into a doctor. Yeah, exactly. And then there's also a lot of people who dealt with the medical system and then they decided that that wasn't really good. Um, yeah. I actually went to this event uh, a few months ago. I think that was back in 2019, in no, late November, early December. But I met this girl and um, I ended up talking to her a little bit about my business. And, you know, most people don't know about ashwagandha. But when I brought it up to her, she was like, oh, I know exactly what that is. I've been taking it for years because she told me basically she got in some sort of um, accident or ended up um, being prescribed like uh, pharmaceutical drugs mm -hmm. or like anxiety and ended up getting addicted to it. So she was like addicted to, I forgot if it was anti-anxiety or antidepressants, so stuff like Xanax and Zoloft and stuff like that. But she said she was addicted to pharmaceutical drugs um, because of like whatever, you know, mood disorder she was dealing with. Mm -hmm. and certain point she ended up um moving over to ashwagandha and was able to kick the addiction and hasn't gone back since wow like yeah i've been swearing by it ever since wow break that addiction probably a pretty high dose of ashwagandha right um not necessarily um really? yeah not necessarily uh, especially like you know it, it depends everyone's body has different tolerances but uh you know, I write on my website that the recommended dosage to feel the effects is about 300 to 600 milligrams, which can, for most brands, probably be even one pill, uh, mm -hmm. one to two pills once a day. Wow. Or, you know, so it's pretty minimal dosage. So you don't need to be taken four or five at a time to get some effect. You, you can literally take one and feel the effect. Wow. Yeah. Um, so... You know, it doesn't necessarily mean you got to take a high dose, though for some purposes, some high doses are better. But uh, ashwagandha is an interesting supplement and an interesting herb because it's got so many different kinds of benefits. It's got uh, mental ones, so it helps with um, mood stabilization, depression, anxiety, but it also has a bunch of physical benefits. It helps with muscle growth. It helps with your immune system. Um, it helps improve your testosterone. Um, it helps with uh, fertility and reproductive health as well. Like there's a bunch of random benefits that it, that it has. And depending on like the main reason you're taking, taking it for, you might not really need to take a high dose. So it seems like a really, it's like nature's like roided out multivitamin. Well, um, I call it a super drug or a miracle drug only because like it just does so many things. And then also there's re really barely any negative side effects, of, if at all. You know, it's very non-toxic. Uh, it's an interesting herb because it's been used for thousands and thousands of years by different cultures around the world. So uh, ashwagandha is a drug used in Ayurvedic medicine in India, which is an 8,000 year old system. Uh, it's also been used in Chinese medicine for thousands and thousands of years. I think as far back as three to 5,000 BC. So, and it's been documented, like they literally have like documents and, um, you know, artifacts that they found from these cultures, like ancient India, uh, you know, ancient Indian culture and ancient Chinese culture to where 
they had, you know, people who were writing about these herbs and plants, writing about how it helped people. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, specifically, Chinese medicine was a pretty sophisticated system to where they were recording a lot of this stuff thousands of years ago and they had even encyclopedias of different herbs and drugs and their effects benefits pros and cons like they were really on top of it yeah it makes you wonder it makes you wonder if we put more money into researching that you know what what was written down thousands of years ago instead of trying to remake nature with modern harmful chemicals and whatnot yeah, exactly. Like if you even look at ashwagandha, you know, as far as some of its properties, like it's been studied um, that it works just as well as antidepressants like uh, lorazepam and imipramine when it comes to reducing depression. And this is a natural herb with almost no side effects, you know, like, you know, there's some people who uh, shouldn't take ashwagandha, like pregnant women, uh, I think some people with certain thyroid issues shouldn't really take it, but for the most part, it's a pretty non-toxic herb. Like I can swallow three of them right now, or I can swallow like five, eight, ten of them, and I wouldn't have to worry about anything. Like wow. it's like, oh, I'm gonna get sick, or I'm, my health's gonna be in danger because I took this. It's right. non-toxic, you know. It's not really harmful, but it still has a lot of amazing benefits. No. Well, the ashwagandha might be amazing. The industry itself, does the industry itself have any drawbacks? Is there any issues with the supplement industry that people should know? I mean, there's definitely a lot of drawbacks with the supplement industry, just like there's drawbacks with any industry. Um, supplement industry can be very, very competitive, depending on what kind of supplement you're selling. Um, fitness and the supplement industry are pretty intertwined. And fitness is an industry to where you have a lot of competition mm -hmm. and you have, um, a lot of people trying to beat each other out and win attention. And also it's very heavily saturated. There's a low barrier to entry for people who are into fitness and stuff like that. Like that's one of the most common things that you'll see online is people selling their fitness programs or talking about health or bodybuilding or working out and stuff like that. So it's very, very popular. Therefore, it means it's um, a lot of people vying for attention. Yeah. What's, um, what's one thing that if somebody is really interested in starting a supplement brand, what's one thing you would tell them that they have to do regardless, uh, they have to have regardless before they start? Uh, they have to research. They have to research, number one, the product, the mm -hmm. specific product especially depending on how many products they're going to launch with or which products they're going to focus on they have to do a lot of research on the product uh knowing about you know its history its uses the different ways you can market it you got to understand the legality of the product mm. uh, you know because you know sometimes these supplements might be legal in one country but illegal in another or you know, it might be harder to source from one place versus another. There might be different uh, FDA regulations in regards to it. Right. A lot but, of things that you don't just like, you can't just be like, oh, product, add to my store, start selling. You have to really like think about it and do some deep work. Yeah, you got to do some research. And then you're also going to want to look at, you know, where it's sold most. And you got to understand, um, you know, kind of how you're going to, price it and you know what the prices are on the market and also even the general trends like is this a product that's getting more popular is this a product that people don't really you know deal with and then within that what kind of opportunities are there because for example i sell ashwagandha i sell one product one mm -hmm. one supplement um and ashwagandha has, you know, its benefits, its pros and its cons. And it's not that well known, but that also means there's an opportunity for me to educate people. So I put out a lot of educational and informative content about ashwagandha, about origins and history and benefits and the science of it and things of that nature. And that actually is a great marketing opportunity because you get to, you know, help people, you get to you get to put out information without making it a hard sell. And, you know, you get to also get new customers because, you know, you have a chance to get people that are at the top of the funnel. 
and you're just educating them and they're finding out about it and then they might start going through the journey and they're like i want to get this now right right well shamin you dropped a lot of really really good knowledge on here what's uh do you have anything you'd like to add before we close off this podcast and go to the questions um yeah uh i would like to add like anybody that wants to get into you know supplements and the supplement industry you know it's definitely a great industry to be in because for me like i know for a fact that my product helps people you know i get feedback from people who take it um people who are my customers and stuff like that and you know they take it because it helps them with their health you know some people swear by it take it every day and when you when you know you're out there helping people like you can never you know feel bad or you know feel some type of way about selling your product like I'm proud to sell ashwagandha and know that my product is out there helping people be healthier and feel better, um, you know, be happier, improve their mood, things like that. Yeah. Well, and you don't, you don't have to, you don't have to mind fuck yourself to be like, am I helping people? Well, they're buying the product and they're happy. So like, I guess I'm helping people, but it's just, it works. Exactly. It's happy. It, it, it just, it just works. So mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the benefit is in the product itself rather than the perception and like the market fitting and blah, blah, blah. And you, you, don't, you don't have to do anything. If, if, you, if they get the product and it works, you're helping them. Exactly. Exactly. I believe in my product 100%, which is a big aspect of marketing and sales in general. Well, it looks like there ain't any questions in the chat dropped. So I think we're going to, we're going to call it here, man. I think, uh, I think. I think that people will learn a lot. And if you guys need any info on supplements, you guys have any questions regarding the industry, y'all should reach out to Shamin and he would be happy to help you and give you some amazing advice like he described on here. Shamin, do you have anything else you'd like to add links wise, where, where people can find you, what your stuff is, all that stuff. Um, if you want to uh, reach out to me, just, uh, you know, Type up Shamin Yakubu, S H A M E E N Y A K U B U. Uh, that's pretty much my, I mean, that's my full name. And that's how you can find me on pretty much any social media platform, whether it's Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram. And then, you know, my supplement brand is called Zen Medicinal, Z E N Medicinal. So if you uh, search for that anywhere on, you know, Google or any social media platform, I got social media accounts, I have my website it's in medicinal.com and you know there's plenty of information about that so i'm always posting content about you know health business mindset self-improvement entrepreneurship so you know all good stuff questions all good stuff well links will be in below for all of that ladies and gentlemen and i hope you really enjoyed this episode of the art house talk show podcast whatever the fuck we're calling this thing and everyone take it easy